Good evening, dearly beloved. I welcome you all with love and with peace to today's online Digging Deep service. Today is Tuesday, May the 25th, 2021. As we receive from God today, I pray we shall be drawn closer to Him and become hearers and doers of His word in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, by the grace of God, we shall wrap up the series, The Understanding of Pleasing God, as we take a look at the sub-theme, Be Spiritually Minded. I'd like to welcome all those who are joining us, and I pray that God will do you good today in the name of Jesus. Our text for tonight will be taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Let us pray. Oh, some God, mighty God, we give you praise, awesome God, we give you praise, mighty God, you are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. Father, tonight as we lift up your name in praises, in adoration, in worship, please fill our hearts with your presence, fight all our battles, and give us victories on all sides in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill us with understanding and let your word bear fruit in all our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are looking at part four of our series, The Understanding of Pleasing God. And today we'll wrap up the series by the grace of God. By we're going to concentrate or look at the sub team, be spiritually minded. And I'm taking my text from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Romans 8, verses 5 and 6. I will read it now. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we've learned a great deal. We've learned so much what it means to please God and what tools are available to us in order for us to be equipped in pleasing Him. We've learned that God's grace is a combination of His love, His mercy, His favor, compassion, even His patience. And we've learned that He freely gives it to everyone. This is so that we might be fully equipped to please Him. We've also learned that to please Him is to his will. Amen? To please him is to do his will. To do his will is to obey his commandments. To please him is to do his will, and to do his will is to obey his commandments. And in obeying God's commandment, you must take some certain actions. We've also learned that without faith, it is practically impossible to please him. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Last week, we looked at the sub theme also in part three of the understanding of pleasing God. We looked at the sub theme last week on the fear of God, the fear of God. 
the fear of God in pleasing him. And I said that the fear of God is born out of the knowledge of who God is and what God expects from us as his children. So when you know who God is, you understand the capacity that he carries, you know what he can do, then you, because of that knowledge of God, you fear God. Amen? Because you don't want to attract the wrath of the one who created all things, who is also a consuming fire. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. We touch on the effects of the fear of God, what the fear of God can help us to do. Amen? You can also call it the advantages or the benefits of the fear of God. We touched on it last week as well. And we said that the fear of God helps us in pleasing Him. You know, we talked about the fear of God helps us to flee from sin. It helps us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. It strengthens us to do His will. It keeps us humble. It makes us to be counted among the blessed. And the fear of God protects us and also allows us to enjoy God's favor. That's what we practically talked about last week. So tonight, as we wrap up this series, The Understanding of Pleasing God, let's look more into the, the something be spiritually minded. Firstly, I would like to pay attention or talk about the mind. Amen? The mind. The mind speaks to your thought process, your thinking faculty, and your consciousness to your surroundings and also your expectations. Your mind is that part of you that processes information, that takes information from various, put it together, process it, analyze the things around you, your thought process. And it allows you to be conscious about your surroundings, your environment, where you live, where you work. Amen. And it also processes the expectations that you have. That's your mind. The mind speaks to who you are and what you believe in, which in turn will determine your actions or your inactions. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. It speaks to who you are, what you believe in, and that will you know, form the actions you take or the actions that you refuse to take. I can therefore say that your mind is made up of who you are and will eventually determine who you will become. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, Proverbs 4, 23, it says, keep your hearts with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. The decisions you make today will impact on your life tomorrow. To be spiritually minded, therefore, is to submit your thought process to be subject to what the Spirit is saying. I'll take it again. To be spiritually minded is to submit your thought process your mind, your heart, submit it and be subject to what the Spirit is saying. To be spiritually minded is, you know, it gives an outcome of life and peace because life of Jesus gives everlasting life and grants you peace in all issues. To subject yourself to the Holy Spirit is to submit yourself to obeying the will of God. I want us to get that very clear. Subjecting your mind. Now, your mind, amen, your, your, to, to, be, to be spiritually minded, is submitting your thought process, amen, to be subject to what the Spirit is saying. Keep that on one side. Now, to subject yourself to the Holy Spirit is to submit yourself to obeying the will of God. Amen. So when you bring it together, spiritually minded means you are submitting your mind to the control of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit 
helps you in obeying the will of God. John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14 verse 26. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit, the Helper. He says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in the name of Jesus, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit will empower you, remind you to obey what Jesus has spoken, doing the will of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit amplifies what God has put in place, what Jesus has come to do. The Holy Spirit amplifies it, reminds you, empowers you, helps you to do it. So the Holy Spirit does not work on its own agenda. It works in line, in sync, with the will and the purpose of God the Father, God the Son. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will empower you. It will remind you to obey what God has put in place. John chapter 12 and verse 49. John 12, 49. For I have not spoken of my own authority. Jesus here again telling us. It says, I have not spoken of my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command. What I should say, I will actually speak. Amen. Looking at these two scriptures, John 14, 26 and John 12, 49, looking at the two scriptures together, you will see that the Holy Spirit carries on what Jesus has started and the commandments of God. So the Holy Spirit works, amplifies, helps us to do the will of God. Praise the mighty To be spiritually minded is to subject your heart and mind to do God's command or commandments and doing what pleases Him. Because when you do His commandments, you please God. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So when I say spiritually minded, it's not that one should disassociate himself or herself from physical activities and you know you just lock up yourself in a room praying and fasting because when people hear spiritually minded or anything in quotes that has to do with the spirit everything that they think of is prayer and fasting and they said look this is for the pastors and the bishops amen so they want to you know, move away from it but to be spiritually minded is to set your mind on the things that pleases God. That is so simple. That's what it means to be spiritually minded. It's not for you to be thinking of the spirit or you, you leave the physical world or you lock up yourself in a room, no food, no water, you are praying, you are speaking in tongues. That is not what we mean by spiritually minded. To be spiritually minded means that you subject your thought process, your thinking, your mind, amen, your thought faculty under the control of the Holy Spirit. And I've been able to tell you that the Holy Spirit just amplifies the commandments of God, the will of God, what God has done, what Jesus has come to establish, that's what the Holy Spirit amplifies. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10. Colossians 1 and verse 10. It says that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Pleasing God involves increasing your knowledge of him and then putting these revelations about God to practice. And that's what it means to be spiritually minded. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 6, Ephesians 6, 6, it says, not with eye service. As men pleasers, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Pleasing God comes from the heart, rendering service to God from your heart, and not by eye service as men pleasers. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10. Ephesians 5 and verse 10. And it says, 
try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Try to discern what is pleasing. Find out. Amen. Find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Amen. I dare tell you, if you can be spiritually minded, subject your heart, your mind, your soul, your thought process under the control, submit it under the control of the Holy Spirit, you will be spiritually minded. Because the Holy Spirit will remind you, it will teach you, it will show you, it will, uh, will help you, it will amplify the will and purpose of God for you to do them. And that is what it means to be spiritually minded. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 29, John 8, 29, he says, and he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. So to be spiritually minded is to set your heart and mind to the things that are pleasing to God, which will bring you life and peace. And I pray that to be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, what are the, let's look at a few examples of the things that can qualify as being spiritually minded. Amen. What are those things that you can do, that I can do, that we endure our hearts to be spiritually minded? There are certain things that we will do, we will concentrate on that will help us to be spiritually minded. Just about three or four that I've put down. Closer work with God rather than satisfying the flesh. Everyone that is born of a woman has the desires of the flesh, the things that, you, that will please your physical body. Amen? The things that will satisfy the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, the pride of the loss of the flesh, those things that will satisfy us. Amen. A lot of people they concentrate on those things, which the Bible calls the works of the flesh, and those things lead to destruction. But if you can develop a closer work with God, amen, you will find out that you will qualify or you'll be referred to as one that is spiritually minded. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do That you can please God because when you are spiritually minded, you do the things that are pleasing to God, you do the things that the Holy Spirit, you know, endures you to do, and those things are pleasing to God. Develop a closer work with God, not only, or sorry, developing a closer work with God not only ensures that you please Him by keeping His commandment, but He also helps you to be conscious of the things that you say, and the meditations of your heart, the thought process, your mind, what you think in your heart. Because we know that God sees our heart and searches the intents of our heart. Psalm 19 and verse 14, Psalm 19 and verse 14, it says, let the word, David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Because God sees our hearts. So to be spiritually minded is not only to make sure that you walk to please him, you are also conscious of what you say and the things that you conceive in your heart, the meditations of your heart. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Number two, example of what we can do to make us spiritually minded. Number two is that you spend time in praying. 
Another thing that will make you spiritually minded is prayers. Prayers. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, anything, according to his will, what does he do? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, we, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. In other words, if we pray according to the will of God, amen, we know that he answers our prayers. Prayer is communion with God. And when you commune with God, he speaks back to you. He answers you. Amen. You receive from him. And the Holy Spirit helps us to pray aright. Because it is difficult for us to pray the will of God on our own. Why? Because there are so many things that distract us. Our mind. To, that, that's what we're talking about. Spiritually minded. Amen. When you are spiritually minded, you will be pleasing to God. When we pray, there are so many things that distract us that we want to pray those things that will satisfy us as in flesh. So that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, he says that we don't know how to pray. Amen. The Spirit also helps our witnesses. For we don't know how we ought to pray. For us. For teaching us, praying, helping us to pray the mind and the will of God. Amen. So one of the ways that you can be spiritually minded, which is very, very crucial, is praying, especially praying in the Holy Ghost. So I pray that you'll be strengthened to pray, pray without ceasing, and pray in the Holy Ghost. Consistent study and meditation of the Word of God also helps us to be spiritually minded. This is number three now. Consistent study and meditation on the Word of God. It will help you to be spiritually minded. Amen? It will help you. The more you study and meditate on God's Word, the more you discover God's will for you, His expectations, and also the promises that He has given unto you. You become informed on what to do and what to avoid in order to please Him. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. It says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And these are pleasing to God. Ephesians 1 17. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The more we know God, the more we will be spiritually minded. The more our hearts, our thought process will be geared into what God has in store for us. The more we will submit ourselves to the control of the Holy Spirit. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Another way that we can be spiritually minded you know, which I will not fail to mention, is that you must get involved in building God's kingdom. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved in building God's kingdom. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Amen? If you put your treasure in the things of God, building His kingdom, your mind will be there. Your mind will be there. And when your mind is in building the kingdom of God, of course you are spiritually minded because you are subjecting your mind and thought process, your desires to the things of God, to the control of the spirit of God, to establishing God's kingdom and doing his will. And therefore you will please him. But if your mind, if you are not involved in building God's kingdom, resources, when you spend it on it, then you have a stick there. You will want to know what happens. You are interested because you have spent your resources there. Amen? 
do all you can in helping or getting involved in building God's kingdom on it. Contribute in working in his vineyard. Be a worker. Help out. Do something. Don't just come to church on a Sunday or on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday and you take off. Get involved in working in his vineyard. Get involved in evangelism. Tell somebody about Jesus. Share your testimony with someone. Your colleague in the office. Tell them. Let them know. Amen. You will find out that people will look up to you. They will come to you. Say, oh, my brother, my sister, my friend, my colleague, look at what I'm going through. What should I do? Help me to pray. Talk to God on my behalf. You will be relevant. Evangelism makes you relevant. Amen? It makes you relevant. Give sacrificially towards the work of God. Put your resources there. Put your resources there. And you'll be spiritually minded. Be a helper to someone else. And consider the people that are less privileged around you. Stop praying for yourself alone. My helper, my helper. You too be a helper to someone else. Be a helper to someone else. Show the love of Christ to someone and be a blessing to others. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So in conclusion, pleasing God is mandatory for all of us if we are to succeed in working with God. You can't work with God without pleasing Him. There's no way. Amen. You must please Him. If you are going to work with God, you must please God. We must obey His commandments if we are to please Him. God said it clearly, or should I say it is the uh, prophet, you know, then in the Old Testament, when the prophet is speaking, he's speaking the mind of God. So Samuel told it to Saul clearly that obedience is better than sacrifice. There is no amount of sacrifice that can be compared to obedience. Even if you have not even started sacrifice, obey first. And obeying is pleasing to God. Pleasing Him gives so much benefits when you please God. There are so much benefits, such as answered prayers, or made favors, divine protection, and also being a vessel of honor in His hands, becoming relevant in the things and the kingdom of God. To please Him, you must exercise your faith. Because anyone who comes to him must first of all believe that he exists. He is the God of all flesh. Amen. And there, and he is a rewarder of everyone who didn't be seeking. You must believe. You must believe. You must exercise your faith in order to please him. The fear of God is also key for us in pleasing him. Because the fear of God is born out of the knowledge and the revelation and the things that you know about God, the things he can do, the capacity he carries. And because of that, you fear him so that you don't incur the wrath of God in disobedience. So the fear of God helps us to keep on pleasing him. Once you possess understanding and knowledge of who God is, you will surely fear him and do all you can to avoid his wrath. To be spiritually minded of the Holy Spirit. And when you get to that level, oh goodness, you, are, you become pleasing unto God. To answer the call, amen, to answer the call is the first step in submitting to God and the Holy Spirit. As I wonder tonight, God is calling you. He died for your sins so that he can save you from condemnation. And to answer that call of salvation is the first step for you in submitting to the control of God and in submitting to the will of God. Answer that call tonight and let today count for you in the journey of your progress. Because when you answer it, your journey to greatness and fulfilling destiny begins. Make today count and answer the call tonight. 
All you need to do is to say these prayers after me, believing in your heart, and your journey to greatness will begin. Because once you turn away from sin and the blood washes you, then your life will have a complete turnaround. So you pray with me and say, Father, I come to you just as I am, and I ask that you forgive me. Please wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from every form of iniquity, unrighteousness, every of my misdeeds. Please wash me in your blood. Tell him that you believe that he died for you on the cross of Calvary. And right now you are confessing him as your Lord and your Savior. I pray with you that he will write your name in the book of life. And beginning from now, you become a son and a daughter of the Most High God. So shall it be for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen and amen. You said that prayer, you believe it, I congratulate you because your journey to greatness and fulfilling destiny has begun. And truly and truly, you shall be great in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Thank you, amen. Thank you for following us on the series. You can watch it or go back to on our Facebook page and look for part one, part two, part three, and part four. So you can have the full package of this series, The Understanding of Pleasing God. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So as we wrap up tonight, just a few prayers and we'll be done. Join me as we pray. Father, thank you for a wonderful and impactful time in your prayers. Please multiply our blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please transform us from many pleasers to God pleasers in the name of of Jesus. By the reason of this series, the understanding of pleasing God, please build our faith, imbibe the fear of God in us, multiply your grace upon us all, and please help us to be spiritually minded in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us grow in the knowledge of God, and please establish us in your glory, in Jesus' most precious and wonderful name we have been. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for being a part of the service tonight. If you have a question, please drop it on the comment box and we'll get back to you immediately. Please be a blessing to others by sharing this message to friends and family. God bless you all. Shalom.